Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Hi, I'm David Everett. This is Chuck Richards, and this is where the Alley Arts Institute project all began. I came out of this building one evening and one of my employees stopped me and turned around and said, look how ugly your building is. And that led to a conversation that we could have a mural on this wall and that wall and that wall and that wall. Well, that led to a brainstorming session and we decided to organize a nonprofit called the Alley Arts Institute. And we decided that we would create the history of Minnesota the, of a thousand years and fill the alleys of Wadena. I asked an artist uh, by the name of Laura Fonlander from Shakopee to paint the story of mining in Minnesota. And so up here in the top right, you can see we got the deep pit mines that went as much as 2,000 feet down. And while that mining was going on, there were seven guys called the Merritt Brothers that were busy looking for iron in other places and then one day their wagon broke and the wheel scarred the earth and they picked up this, this rust colored soil and had it tested and by accident they found the Masabi Iron Range which was 64% iron. On this building here, which happens to be the first building we worked on with art, I asked a local artist to create what she imagined Minnesota to look like a thousand years ago before man began changing it. And so we have all of the seasons of Minnesota life with all of the abundant wildlife. <clears throat> and part of what makes these murals so much fun is that there are many places on here when you look at them carefully that you can see that little children did the painting. Uh, because the two artists that did these had several children from about age six through age nine work with them. Uh, on creating that art. On these two buildings, uh, we have the only art that was actually painted directly on the building. All of the rest of the art has been created on a cement board and attached to the building so that it would be much easier to repair them. Uh, so we had to learn that as we did things. The mural on the right is uh, a uh, conversion of a blacksmith shop that was actually uh, operated by the great grandfather of that property owner uh, over in Bertha. And that building has been associated with the leather industry for over a hundred years. Next to it is a picture of a Norwegian family of immigrants that uh, uh, are, the relatives still live in this area. The Alley Arts project took four and a half years and early in that project I asked Chuck if he would paint the collage of cultures on this wall and I asked him how much of the wall uh, he would do and his answer was well, I'll do the whole thing. And so he did. This took me one week shy of two years, and I worked from uh, almost every day on it, three to four hours and even more sometimes. The mural's about 144 feet long and 12 feet high, and on it is over 680 people, 125 different flags, plus the modes of transportation that brought these people to the state of Minnesota. We have uh, a lot of Native Americans, Norwegians, Swedes, Poles, Germans, the Finns, uh, just to start, you know, and, and now we have quite a number of people have come to Minnesota. The Somalians, uh, the Hmong, and uh, they're up on here. Uh, and I also put the uh, ethnic costumes that they, uh, not some clothes actually, that they wore in the countries they came from. Chuck's got a slightly twisted sense of humor. Okay. And so if you look carefully in this middle piece up here, you'll see that the modes of transportation is, you know, these people are coming into Minnesota and there's a welcome there's sign. There. And right next to the welcome to Minnesota is the road under repair sign. So that was, that was just my little, little way of having at it. People started contributing to me. I had people come to me and they said, uh, well, you know, my family's been here a long time. Would you put them up, you know? And I did, and, and uh, it ended up, we have the people coming from different states that I hear about, they come here and get their picture took with their relatives. That's cool, I like that. This mural is called Minnesota Music, and it starts with native flutist, drummers, the early settlers with the fiddlers and the harmonica 
to our own bandstand, which is right here in the park, and on through various stages of music until we get to a modern rock and roll band. This is the only mosaic in our collection, and it was created by Laura Moe, the art instructor from Perm High School, and 120 high school kids. And uh, all of the pieces in here come from plates that come from uh, antique stores in Minnesota. So uh, we have old merchandise here, and uh, uh, each one of these uh, panels, we had to cut them in half so they were only four foot by four foot because by the time you put the mortar and the plates and the panels on there, each one of them weighed over 100 pounds. When Ramsey was in uh, Washington, he was talking with Lincoln and the war is just starting and uh, he uh, volunteered the Minnesota troops who were the first ones to be volunteered for the Civil War from the, uh, the North. And what I've done here is I took, uh, there were 15 different engagements at the battle, the first battle of Bull Run. And I took five of them and I combined them together to show this battle. And what you're seeing here is a battle, actually one second in the battle, like the cannons are just starting to be fired and the smoke is just starting to come out of them. And the North Carolina Cavalry coming down on these troops was actually annihilated when, that, when this happened. This mural is named Duality. It was painted by an artist by the name of Marty Tubles, who is an elder of the uh, Sioux Nation in South Dakota and he actually lives in New Mexico and he came here and painted this for us and his purpose here was to demonstrate in the far back left you'll see that both the Native Americans and the European settlers coexisted quite peacefully together and that was the history of the natives and the Europeans all over this country. They all started out peacefully coexisting. And then the value of money and the interest of land and all that sort of stuff began to cause people uh, to be more interested in ownership. And to the natives, it was kind of confusing that the Europeans would offer them things to own the land because in their culture, there was no way, nobody could own the land. But, you know, okay, if you want to give me something for, for land you can't own, I'll take it. And then as soon as the white people thought they owned the land, they started putting up fences and driving the natives off. And then they began to understand what they hadn't previously understood. And that led to the whole change of the culture. But it is there to demonstrate that the conflict, like almost all other conflicts, is usually driven by greed and money. Wadena is such a classic, all-American, real downtown. If you walk up and down our main street, you don't find lots of boarded up buildings, modern boutiques, uh, a cluster of, of modern antique shops. You find real businesses that have been here for uh, dozens and dozens of years. One of our favorite features is the Art Deco Cozy Theater uh, that this is the rear wall of. So it was an appropriate place for a local artist, Dee Scogan, to paint a mural of Minnesota movie stars. Of course, we had to have some fun in the course of doing this whole thing. One of the fun things we did was over here on the uptown, uh, they needed to uh, insulate the second floor. And uh, so when they uh, decided to do that, we decided that we would put art in all of those windows. And this, the uptown is our sports bar. And so the owner happens also to be an art instructor. So I got all the materials together and he did all of the art. And there, I believe we have 39 sports heroes listed in those 14 pieces. There are eight of them on this side and six on the other side of the building. I believe this to be the most beautiful outdoor portrait gallery that uh, may exist, that certainly in Minnesota, maybe anywhere in the country. The artist who painted these was asked to portray lesser known leaders of Minnesota. We have Chief Little Crow who led the 1862 uprising Charles Eastman, who was the first Native American medical doctor in this country, also one of the founders of the Boy Scouts of America. Martha Ripley, the first woman doctor who founded a hospital for unwed women and their children. Uh, Joe Roulette, who was the renegade uh, uh, pol uh, politician in the uh, uh, territorial legislature. Uh, they actually passed a law to move the capital from St. Paul to St. Peter and Joe took that legislation and went into hiding and stayed there until it was too late for the governor to sign it into law. 
Uh, Mary Gibbs was the 24-year-old commissioner of Itasca State Park, took over from her father, and prevented the logging companies from flooding the land and, har and harvesting the virgin timber. Uh, we got James J. Hill, which most people know, but what they don't know is that James J. Hill came here as an 18-year-old teenager, and within 15 years, he had monopolized the transportation and waterfront shipping barge business in St. Paul, and from there went into the railroading business. Uh, and then we had uh, uh, Cass Gilbert, who designed the Capitol, James Goodhue, the first publisher, and Jane Gray Swisshelm, who is my hero. Uh, Jane ran a newspaper in St. Cloud and she would write these stories about how the, the business bureaucrats and the politicians would cheat the people and, and they didn't like it very much. So at some point somebody hired some hoodlums to go in and tear up her, her press and her newspaper and she went to the bank to borrow money and the bank said, yeah, we'll loan you this money, but on one condition and that is that the St. Cloud reporter no longer do this and this and this and this and this. So Jane thought for a little bit, and then she said, okay, and she signed it, took the money, went home, changed the name of the paper, and kept on doing exactly the same thing. Thank you for taking this abbreviated tour. We've taken you through maybe about uh, a half or a little less of all of the murals here in Wadena. And um, what I want to share at the conclusion is, uh, this is such a beautiful classic town. Uh, we have a gorgeous uh, guide that we printed. You can come here to the depot or the Chamber of Commerce or call ahead and line up a, a, a tour. We've got a half a dozen people that can take you on a tour. And, and it's a great fun place and we've got wonderful shops to visit, very friendly merchants. It's a wonderful all-American downtown Minnesota. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org.